how to dye papers using Kool-Aid into a rainbow of colours and making a simple, quick journal. Hello everyone, I'm Caroline and today I'm going to show you how I dyed all these papers in all these pretty colours using Kool-Aid. I've also done some tea dyeing. After I've shown you that, we've got some happy mail and then I'm going to show you how to make a quick and easy journal and we're even going to bind it. But don't panic and don't run away screaming. It really is simple. I'll show you how, stay tuned. So here I've got an example of some of the things I've dyed. This is a ledger and it's not in particularly good condition. It's still, I left it joined together in case I can salvage it to make a double folded piece for a journal, but I don't think I can. That piece is too poor. And I've got these city things to do tomorrow, name, date. So I've dyed those in different colours. There are some green ones. And this is my tea dyeing. So I love these with the tea dye. They look really Asian. This is the lines from the shelf on my cooker, which I thought doesn't matter on some pieces, but it's not on all of them. There you can see that one's much more, well, not plain, but different. I love the sound on oven dyed paper. Hear that? Oh, it's a lovely crinkle. I've got these postcards, so I tried some of those. There's the tea dyeing. I, so I've dyed some postcards in different colours. There's another postcard. Now these are just pieces of paper torn out of a spiral bound notepad. And what have I got here? These are just copier paper that I've dyed. And I had a little, well, I'm not sure what it was. It was some sort of notepad, but there were no lines on the paper and they were just glued at one end. So I tore those out. Some of them got ripped when I was making them because the paper can get very delicate, but they survived. I think that'll be okay and I can always cut that bit off anyway and use the rest. So there's some of those. And then this is what I decided to try because my cooker was actually leaving lines. I decided to try using it as like writing paper lines. So I put it down and I think it worked out really well. So I like that. And again, these little bits here that were a bit delicate because I soaked these too long. I think I add to the charm. Now I have two lots of dyeing here. The first lot I dyed and I left them soak and I did have a lot of trouble with the edges breaking because I was soaking them, I was doing it wrong. Now, on the second lot, I just dipped them in, turned them over, pulled them out and they were fine. They didn't get too delicate. So on my second die, I decided to film it for you to show you how easy it is. It really is easy. It really is messy. As you can see here, my rubber glove broke and I ended up with a red finger. But my camera went bonkers. It's eaten a load of footage, so I'm going to try and make the best of it. So hopefully it'll come out okay and you'll see what I was doing and understand the method. It really is simple. I don't think you'll have any problem. So let's pop over to my kitchen and have a look and see how I dyed all these papers. And I don't actually show the tea dyeing or coffee dyeing, I think this was, but it doesn't matter because it's exactly the same method. Just make yourself up some strong tea or coffee solution and follow the method I use over at my kitchen. So let's pop over and have a look. Now I've got this yellow I thought it was sari silk. I didn't get a chance to check in the shop. I grabbed it quickly. It was on sale and I was in a hurry. And I think it's nylon, but I'm gonna pop this in because it's a beautiful color, but I'd also like some minted tones. Now I've got an awful lot of this, so I can dye this up. I'm popping it in there. Squidge it about a bit and hopefully it'll be really muted. If it's nylon, there's always a chance all the color's going to run back off and it's not going to look any different. Squeeze that out. Hmm. I think it's got quite a nice look to it. So we pop that in the drying tray or in the drip tray. And I've got these. I've tied, put them into bunches of three and tied them in knots. And it's a sort of tie-dye. 
So you will have some nice yellow and some muted tones from the dye if it works. If it doesn't, we won't. So just give them a squidge, get them all covered. I'm not too worried about it if there's a little gap missing on there because I'm actually trying to get a sort of haphazard pattern anyway. Give them a squeeze out, pop them on the draining tray. And now I'm going to do the same with some of this, which is possibly sari sink, probably cotton. I haven't done the burn test. I should have done really, but I'm trying to get all this filmed. Look, there's yards of it. I've been tearing it. I wanted to get it all filmed. Um, so I'm rushing things a little bit tonight and I can make the proper video tomorrow when this is all dry so again it's been dipped in look at that that's a lovely colour now pop it in there right so I've got this little tray now which has got a drip tray within a tray and I'm popping these on here and I'm going to put them in the oven like that see how they go now I've never tried this before with these types of material or fabric don't even know what types they are so I'm going to pop that in the bottom of the oven and see how we get on. It's starting to dry nicely, so we'll pop those into the bottom tray and hmm, they'll need a little longer so we we'll carry on dyeing some more paper. Got several different types. It's a shame I haven't found a really pretty colour purple yet. With all the different flavours of Kool-Aid, I've never yet come across a pretty purple. Maybe I could mix one, I suppose. I'd like a nice lilac shade, and you don't get that with this grape. Now, you may have noticed the sari silk I've put there is starting to get, or the sari, whatever it is, is starting to get very drippy and messy. But I don't mind, because it all adds to the charm. i dye some of these postcards now. I can do five of those. Everything's getting covered in purple. I'm a very messy dyer. Two. These are different on one side to the other. It's the only thing when you've got gloves on, you can't pick anything up. There's my spoon. There we go. Three. I'll put some more of these in. Whoa, drop the whole pad in now. I know. Dip the whole pad in. Why not? Scrunch it up a little bit on the edges so sun goes in and we'll see what that turns out like. At the end of the day it's only a few sheets of paper, scrap paper from an old book so we'll give it a try. And oh, perhaps we'll stick these in as a wood as well. See what happens, see if they come out a little bit more splattery and haphazard. They may, they may not. So we've got quite a few things to go in now. Right, let's go check how the oven's doing. Right, so if we pull this tray out now, you can see the top piece has come away completely. That's nicely dried. Um, that one's dried. Yep. Now these you can see are a little damp in the middle, so I'll move those over. Let's have a look how these are doing. Yep, top one's dry. It's really clever, you know when they're dry. This is still a little bit stuck, so that's not dry as it could be. I really recommend you use an oven glad, glove, glad, oven glove, in there, a little bit of juggling, a little bit of oven jenga, those go there, those there, and I didn't put my glove on, I'm going to have purple fingers again, and they'd be okay there, they don't quite fit, but it doesn't matter, they'll be fine. To use the last of this up now, I'm going to throw in the pieces that have got bits on anyway, because I made a mess. Terribly scrappy and organised and clumsy person as I am in the kitchen or in the studio. We get there in the end, it's just that it, they do say less haste, more speed. But I don't find it makes a difference, I make a mess, whatever I do. These should give us some nice lighter purple pieces of paper in TV. This is such a messy thing to do. That paper. paper even though that paper is a little bit crumply, don't risk tearing your paper to flatten them. 
they cope perfectly well. You can always eye in them if you want to. I don't like eyeing in them. I will tolerate having some weight on them to squash them down, but I think eyeing in takes the excitement out of them. There's just something about some really crinkly paper that's been dyed. Gives it a personality all of its own. Each sheet. So there we go. Now these are bigger sheets and you get a lot more liquid coming onto them, so then I just pour it out back into the tray. Right, I'll do a little bit of green dye in to show you. I've only got the one pack left of them, so much green. I need to get a new supply in of colours. The only colours I've got a lot of are red and purple, which are of all the Kool-Aid colours, my least favourites. Right, so let's throw a couple of green ones in. They're very sticky. Just to use up this little last pack of green. I do love the green. My favourite colours in the whole of the Kool Aid selection is green and blue. I don't know why. They're not that much nicer than the oranges and things, but it just what appeals to me. Isn't it funny how we all like different colours? We all have our preferences. Some people love purple, some people hate purple, some people love orange. Some people hate orange. I find it's all relative to what you're talking about though, because like I really like green, but I wouldn't wear green trousers. And I really like jeans, but I wouldn't want to eat blue mashed potatoes. So it's not a case of you can make anything better by adding your favorite color, is it? What's your favorite color? Let me know in the comments. I struggle with favourite colour. I really like orange and I like oranges, so I think there's a link there. But my favourite combination, if I had to have a combination, is black, white, grey and red. I just like that. Virtually everything in my house is that colour. Mainly white and then with highlights of red, some grey and a little bit of black. So at the moment, with watercolour, my three favourite colours are indigo, turquoise and Naples yellow and I think they make a lovely combination and I love using them. But I wouldn't want to stick to those colours in something like a journal. Hmm. What would your dream journal colours be? Do you like beiges, browns and creams, muted tones, bright, glittery, sparkly, boho type things? I couldn't actually decide. If I had to pick that I was only able to make one type of journal or one colour journal in my whole life. I don't think I could stick to one. At the moment, I fancy making, and here's my list, another botanical one. I want to make a boho, extremely bright, glitzy, purples, dual colours, silvery, sparkly bits, and lots of lace and tassels one. I'd like to make a black and white one, which is mainly black and white. I quite fancy a sort of romantic looking pink. Peaches, creams and pinks, that sort of colouring. That tempts me. Oh, I could just go on all day, couldn't I? I quite fancy making a dress making journal. And I'm going to make a medical journal at some point. I don't know why, but I've seen lots of people make medical ones and some of them are a bit gory for my taste. But I quite fancy it. I'm strange. I have a very eclectic taste. I'm the same with music. I like some opera, not a lot. I am very particular about what operas I like. I couldn't just say, oh, I'm going to the opera. I have to know what it was. I also love pop music. I like a bit of rock music. I don't like heavy metal. I tried getting into it when my children were younger and it really wasn't for me. It's too stressful. I like my music to relax me or brighten me up, cheer me up, but for me, music has to be restful rather than raucous, shall we say. Do any of you like heavy metal? Is it an acquired taste or did you just hear it and thought, oh, I really like this? Right, so that's all my greens done. Right, so let's have a look how these are doing. Oh, that is staying so pretty. Yep, that is nice. I'm going to dry that off and... This in here, I added some more red to that one. 
so you can see already the top one's dry but that one is going to go nicely with it and I do have a tub here of purple that I made up and I'm not keen on the purple and I was going to make more and I'm thinking mm. but what I'm going to do is try some scrunchy purple ones scrunch them up block them in pull them out stick them on there and I'm making rock cakes. I don't think this is going to work. It's only cheap copier paper, so if the worst comes the worst, I can always iron it out and stick something over the top of it. Make some tags with it. Treat it as abstract art. There's rather a lot of this in here, though. Hmm. It seems such a shame to throw it away. I can't think of anything else I want to dye in this colour. Right, we'll use up our last dirty paper we got here that I got fingerprints all over. This could be quite nice actually. Is this drying off already? It's starting to look a pale purple. Would it be funny if this turned out to be my favourite paper? That's the thing with this sort of thing. It's not. That's the thing with this sort of thing. Very thingy. It's not an exact science. It's all sort of expression. Whoops. As I was talking about expression, I had just, I just realised that I left other papers cooking in the oven. Now let's talk about oven temperatures. The fast, the higher you turn your oven, the faster it cooks, the faster it dries. But you've got to be so on the ball with it because some papers, I'll show you later, of mine have dried so quickly and then started to burn. They actually look quite good. But if I'd left them much longer, they probably would have spontaneously combusted. And then I've had a very smoky kitchen. So you don't leave your papers, especially if they're on high. And it is so easy to get distracted when they're on high too. And then it, what would do damage after five minutes if you were distracted, if it was on low, is going to get damaged very quickly on high. On the other hand, if you're really rushing, it's clever. I'll fold that up. See, I'm really not trying very hard here. Just checking in anything. We'll see how it comes up. What have we got to lose? Let's wiggle them about a bit. Like that. Put them up there. We've got some good concession. Oh, now this is just like playing. Oh, my rubber gloves are squeaking. Oh. <laughs> I wanted to squeak my rubber glove. I couldn't. Just try. Oh, yes, I could there. I think just when this air gets in them. But you know what that means, don't you? It means I've got a hole in my gloves, which means I don't have purple fingers again. All that time I waited until my fingers weren't that purple, and I think I've gone and spiked it and got purple fingers again. Well, they were brown last time. Hopefully this time purple or black I'll get away with. The brown really wasn't a good look. Sorry about speaking. This is going to be interesting to see how these come out. They look really good because the more I look at these, the more I like them. Where the paper is actually scrunched, it seems to be soaking in a lot more dye. So I think they're going to have lots of lines on them. So there we have lots of scrunched up furby bits, which are growing on me by the minute. I think this is going to be a success. Oh yes, look. My glove was leaking, at least that one. A few marks on that one, but that one was really bad. Right, I'll get the last of these dry now, and then we'll take them all down to the studio and have a good look at them, see how they came out. So here are some of the things that I dyed. It was yesterday evening, and these are nice and dry, so we'll open them up. You may remember I tied knots to make a sort of tie-dye effect. Let's see how well that worked. If you tie them too tightly then you can't undo them after they've been wet it's really difficult and if you tie them too loosely then the dye can get up inside the knot so it's a bit hit and miss as to whether you've got your knots right open these up i've got lots of frilly ends coming off well, i think that's very pleasant i've also got the ones sure that i dyed without tying and I think they're going to make a nice... Oh, look at it. I definitely have to sort these ends out. I think they're going to make a nice combination. And, oh, ends everywhere. So, uh, you can see there, I've got some more to undo. And that's 
the effect I'm going to get. Now I can iron these. Is that one of them? I've got myself in a knot now. <laughs> I can iron these if I want to, or I can keep them frilly. I quite like them all frilly and messy. I'll see. I'm not a big fan of ironing either. These I forgot about. I've just been running around the house and I know I dyed some more bits of fabric. I can't find them. Where could they possibly be? And then I remembered. I popped them in the microwave while I was cleaning up and then I left them in there. So they're still wet. But I'll show you here what we came up with. Whoops. These got quite a lot of ends on too. That's really pretty. With the red and the purple Kool-Aid. Show you another one because each one is different. Oh, I like this one more. Look at that. <laughs> That's happy, cheerful, and reminds me of poppies a little bit. And I also got the red hue, which I didn't. Oh dear, I'm in a bit of a tangle. I didn't over dye with another color in tie dye because I just love this color. I think it's gorgeous. There are little tiny bits of white on it, which just. I think I could have gone completely solid, but I'm always pleased when there's little bits of white come through because it just adds that interest. And the more interest you can have when you're doing journaling, the better. Every little bit helps so that it becomes a rich tapestry of things to look at, things to touch, things to see, things to explore and discover. They still smell. Oh, smell that. Mmm, cherries. Lovely. But I can't use the walls until I've dried them. I'll pop those there. And I'll show you these. Now up in the kitchen, I said, I really don't like this colour. So I just scrunched the paper up, plopped it in. But now I really like what's happened. And I'm going to call these surprise balls. Because you scrunch the paper up, put it in the dye, even if it's a horrible colour dye, which it did look like. But then when you open them up, you have no idea what's going to happen. And look at that. It looks like hand marbled paper. Now, you could, if you ironed it, it would look even more like hand marbled paper. Show you close there. But I'm not going to iron them, I don't think. I may decide to iron some, but I like them as they are. But let's have a look at some more of these surprise balls. Let's see what this one's like. Oh, look, another beautiful one. There's the back. Show you closely. And now they died, you can see that very dark black colour has separated out from the lilac-y purple colour. It's gone into all the dips and the grooves and left the pretty cut bright lilac-y pinky colour there. So that's worked out really well. I'm going to do this again. I'm now a convert to surprise balls. Mm, I think I might do a whole video on making surprise balls in all different colours and then coming up with a journal made of surprise balls. Right, we'll open one more. This one's tightly stuck together, so I wonder what this is like. Mm. Oh, look! Oh, show you that. Oh, I just love these. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Right, I also did some foldy ones. Now, let's have a look what they came out like. Ah, these are postcards there that's very pleasant but not as nice as the big pieces of paper but i still like that effect and i thought oh, this one's just folded twice yes look what it does to the corners now that's got a bit of green in it it just goes to show the yellow there it's almost come out like a rainbow oh we'll open one more scrunch ball a surprise ball let's have a look Oh, no, this one's a little bit damaged. Hmm, is that a problem? Oh, no, it's not damaged. It's one of those... Yes, it is damaged. <laughs> it's got a hole in the middle, too. Perfect for aged paper if you want something. If you want a grunge-type journal, that would be perfect. And also, you can iron it. You can cut bits out and just keep the whole bits if you wanted to. Let's have a look. And there you've got yourself a nice little piece of paper that you can do something with. Choose your side. And you've taken off the broken bit, but I like the broken bits. So I'm going to settle down later with a cup of coffee and open up with the rest of my surprise bowls.
they were such fun. Yeah, I'm definitely going to make a video doing lots of different colour surprise balls. Keep an eye out for that. I've had some happy mail in the post and I knew you'd like to see what I had. It's always lovely to see art supplies, isn't it? It's such great fun. So I've got three packages here. As you can see, one and two came from the same person. So we'll start off with this one and see what's in here. Now this, Louise sent me off my Amazon wish list. I, I'm so excited to get stuck in with these. Let's have a look what we've got. And the first thing is... Easy runner strips. Oh, I've been dying to get my hands on these. They're going to be so much fun. I've got the dispenser and also two refills. So let's have a look inside. Ooh, how much tape is on one refill? That's pretty impressive. I wondered whether maybe they'd only give you a little bit, but that's nice. So we've got two of those. Stuck to. Whoops. <laughs> it's very sticky. Which is one of the advantages of it, but also a disadvantage if you get it stuck on you. Look, I've still got some on me. Stick that on me. Right, and here it is the dispenser. Right, do I need to keep this for instructions on how to actually put the dispenser refills in? Yes, I do. Right, I'll hang on to this. Move the bag out of the way and. We'll do something little with this just to try it out. Well, I've been making some little envelopes or envelopes just to play about while I was journaling and because it's a random heart. So I thought I'd try this out on these little envelopes. You can stick them in a page and then pop a little tag in or something interesting. But they need sticking down. And I'm now armed with my trusty Easy Runner. Oh, it's even got a pretty pattern on the side. I don't know if you can see that. There. Oh, isn't that posh? So, take that off and let's see how this works. So, it should go down like that and off. Oh, yes, it does. And then down like that and off. Push it together. Oh, yes, that is so firmly stuck and so quick as well. With glue, you have to wait for it to dry. Move it up a bit and let's have a little look what I've got in my tub. Got some bits and pieces in here. How do I get in? So what could we stick on to this little envelope? Mm. Not got a lot of scraps saved up just at the moment. Ticket? No, it doesn't really go with the flowers, does it? No. Oh, a butterfly. Oh, I like the butterfly. Mm. Should we stick it on there instead? Or should we stick it? It's going to be in the way, so I think we'll stick it on the corner there. Oh, that's nice. Right, so rather than put it on the butterfly, I'll put the tape on there. Because if I put it on the butterfly, I'm going to put it in the wrong place. Right, I've already gone a little bit too far there. Glue our little butterfly on. Oh, look at that. If I get a little piece of card out not the one I'll use but you can see that makes a nice little envelope or pocket to put something in there we go so yeah this is absolutely brilliant thank you so much Louise I'm going to have hours of fun creating with that let's try it on one more envelope because I'm enjoying it I'm going to try it on this bit because then I know I'll have exactly the right amount one there one there and then Fold it over and it's done. Whoa, that's really clever. Thank you. I am going to use that probably every day. Right, let's have a look what else is in the bag. Oh, I have been so excited to have some of these two mini ink blending tools. Now, if I can find... See what I mean? I'm terribly disorganised. This is what I usually use. If I'm going to ink something, we'll get... Okay, so I want to ink this little tag. Up until now, I've been getting my ink pad and doing this, which is okay. But it's very difficult then when you get a little small crevices. Let's well finish that off. Both sides. It's quite fulfilling. I love the noise this makes. Move my little tie out of the way. 
So that looks really pretty, but I'll show you my problem. Right, I have actually inked this one, and I managed, but it's very difficult to get this pad <laughs> in there, as you can imagine. So these should be doing the trick for me. Let's open them up and have a look. To use, a attach the fabric side of mini ink blending foam to tool base. Tap ink onto tool. Gently rub tool in circular motion or pounce. Ooh, I think I'll pounce. It sounds much more exciting. For multiple colours, apply light ink first. Use one piece of foam for each colour or wash foams with soap and water to reuse. Now, I've seen refills and I was thinking, why on earth would you need 10 refills? You're not going to wear them out that quickly. But now I can see, if you've got 10 different colour inks, you can keep one for each colour without needing to buy 10 actual stamps. Aha, uh -huh. right, let's get inside. Are you a bit close? Let's take you away a little bit. There we go. Right. Mm, now, these are going to be very difficult not to lose, so I will keep those in my tub of bits. Before I did journaling, I think, what on earth do I want one of those for? And I wouldn't be terribly excited yet. Now I do journaling and I know the potential that this thing has. Oh, that makes me really excited. So I don't need to ink the edges of the other side of this little piece of pocket that I'm going to stick on somewhere. But we're going to ink the inside just to see how this works save me going to find my cutters and cut another one. Oh, look how easy that is it actually holds quite a lot of ink i thought maybe i'd need to sort of i don't know build up the ink over a few splurges to try and get enough on it doesn't look so good because it's on plain white but you can see the general idea and i now know i don't need to put so much on oh let's add a little bit of thickness to there oh, hear that noise i love that <laughs> it just makes me happy so i got this I'm going to use for black, and this then I'm going to use for brown. Oh, well, thank you so much, Louise. These are very useful. And they're going to go into my craft kit, along with this. I keep forgetting the name on it. It's an easy runner. And it is very easy and very quick. Right, let's pop these away and have a look what else we've got in our Happy Mail. Right, I need you further away for this one because it's such a lot here. Now, this was sent to me by Jill. Thank you so much, Jill. And there's a little message. I hope you find a use for it all. Oh, I'm sure I will. Now, I've opened them up, had a quick look what was inside, and something is still outside <laughs> because I couldn't get this back into the envelope. So I thought, well, rather than risk damaging it, I'll show you that first. So let's move those out of the way and let's have a look. Look at this. Now, you know me and my bling, glitter. I love glitter. And look at the colours on the... Ooh, that's just already... Just picking those up like that, I'm inspired. Look at that. Look at the colours. And these are 12 glitter sheets. Acid-free, lignin-free. Just a little bit's been used. That's some very useful paper there. I wonder if there's a piece between... Oh, yes. Each sheet has a piece of paper, which I'll be able to use. So let's have a look. Oh, there's all different shades purple glitter oh yes well there's glitter everywhere already i've got sparkly hands it's all over the table it's all over the carpet but i don't mind i love glitter so there we go. let's open that and put it close look at that oh yes let's try the lighter one see what that comes out like oh, i love it give me bling any day oh there's more there's more these were upside down so there's Two more purples and a pink and a pale pink. Oh, get closer. Ooh, look at that. It's like millions of stars. Let's have a look. And that's everything. DIY crystal picture. Oh, they give you all the little crystals to glue on. And you can make that picture. Oh, and then I could put that in your journal lovely and we got lots of colored card this is it's not a very thick card it's perfect for doing like covers for journals that sort of thing little thin journals not ones with more than one signature in just slim journals so they would be good for that plus pockets and oh possibilities are endless what's in this bag Ooh. 
This seems to have a Christmas theme. Let's have a look. Because I emptied it all out. There's some little. Not sure. What, is that an ice cream and candy cane things like that? Star. Without the pictures on, it's difficult to tell what they are. But I'm sure we'll work it out eventually. And there's a crown and lots of those little bits here. Oh, there's a reindeer and a hat. Right, so we keep popping those in as we work our way through. Oh, look at these. Oh, there's loads of them. You used to get your sweet for Christmas. A tin of sweets and then they have some foil and then some of this and then pinched in either end. Definitely are going to be perfect for my brightly coloured journal. What's this? Mini wooden decoration. Oh, look. It's got like a little house, a little scene, a little diorama with some trees. A snowflake, I think. And another one. Oh, well, what I'll do then, Christmas time, I think I'll save any Christmas happy mail kits like this I get. And we'll do something Christmassy and make up all my happy mail kits. That would be fun. And let's move on to envelope. Oh, the scratchy my scissors. Envelope number two. Hmm, what we got here? This one is fair bulging. Look. Bits of purple and sparkle already, you can see. That's empty. Put that over there. Let's empty this bag. Oh, what a crinkly bag. Right, now I had to try one of these when I saw them. I thought, oh, are they those bows? And you just pull on, if I show you, up inside there, there are some strings. So I can unfurl this one. Perfectly safe to unfurl them. Like that. And then you just open up the bottom bit, pull the strings. And that happens. You've got yourself a bow in seconds, it's not even minutes seconds and you've got a pretty bow like that hmm i may find a use for some as ribbons and some as bowls if it's a bit fat i can even get an iron on cool with a something between and oh, open that up press it down when well, it's all in the right position it's all coming unfurled again and use those in a journal right let's move on oh, we've got more bows Oh, tissue paper is always useful. We got some pinks, some different shades of pink too. Always good. Uh, oh, that's a pretty baby lemon. And we got some um, blue. Is it purple in it? What a lovely colour combination. There's some purple in with that blue. I don't know if the camera's picking it up. I don't think it is. No, it all looks blue on my screen. But that is purple and blue together. Oh, we got teal and pink. Oh, teal and pink. pink. They don't look like teal and pink. They look like blue and pink on here. Blue and purple. Oh, well. <laughs> You'll have to rely on my description. And then we got some white and some black. It should be perfect when I do my black and white journal. And some orange. And some... Aha! So that should be stuck on there. There we go. So, oh, look. It picks up off the back there very clever there we go the little so it's got a, a ruler on it as well in centimeters that's useful if i'm going to stick them on at particular distances so thank you jill look at the pile here i got whoa so that is going to keep me quiet for hours well <laughs> i don't know if it'll keep me quiet but it'll keep me busy so a big thumbs up and thank you for my happy mail this week it was great fun opening it and i can't wait to start using it Right, let's get back to doing something with this dye paper. So this is what I've made. It's beautifully coloured paper that you've made from your Kool-Aid dyeing. And then you just need a cover for it. Now I've used a thinner paper cover on this. I've used a pale colour because I think it really contrasts and brings out the rainbow on the papers inside. So let's get started and make another one. And I'll show you how easy this is to make. Now you really can do this. I'm convinced you will be able to do this if you can thread a needle and if you can poke a hole and if you can tie a knot you can do this so easy so please watch and even if you're convinced it isn't for me I can't sew it's not really sewing i'll show you how just how easy this is it's like putting a peg into a hole 
Right, let's get started. I've got some, this is crochet cotton. You can use um, embroidery floss, you can use ribbon. Uh, some people use dental floss, I think. I think you can pretty much use anything that is like stringy and very strong. You don't want to put weak uh, thread in because it'll snap and then your signatures will fall out and you'll get all annoyed. So there's my needle, my thread, I've got myself some clamps and some paper. Well, this is a thick card, so I'm going to use this as the cover this time. I'm really liking the idea of monotone or plain on the outside of my rainbow journal. And you'll need your paper. So I've got purple, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and then it would come round to purple again. So we need a cover for this. So this is the A4 papers folded in half, so it's now A5 size, which actually measures 21 centimetres. Now we need the cover to be 22 centimetres because you want a little bit of an overhang. Now if you've got something like this that's shape sensitive, it may be an idea to fold it in half the way you want it to be. Just corner to corner. And then pop it in like that. Cut two sides at once because otherwise you could accidentally cut it the wrong way and then it won't look right or won't look the way you want it to look. So 22 centimetres, not particularly square, there's a slight discrepancy, but that really doesn't matter. We're doing this to have fun. So let's run the cutter along. Run it back. There we go. That is going to make a lovely cover. Open it up. Try our signatures out. Yes, they're going to fit very nicely. Now, a good thing at this point is to use a bone folder, or in my case, a pastry brush, and just run over the join in each of your pieces of paper to make sure they give you a nice crisp edge. It'll be so much easier when it comes to joining your journal together and getting them to sit together nicely. It's very therapeutic to do. I quite enjoy doing this. All the little noises that come with journaling and anything like this with craft, you can hear the crinkly paper and the rub of something against the paper. It's such a lovely thing. I pop all these together. in the order of the rainbow or not <laughs> depending on what you want to do there are no rules and this is a signature that's all it is and sometimes books have more than one signature joined together but our book because i told you this is going to be a super easy journal is just going to have one signature holding it very firmly together <clears throat> Ooh, got a wobbly voice this morning put that in there to hold that side and then put that on that side, hmm, very close to the middle. Now the problem I do have is because I've been using different types of paper, this it just goes to show not all copy paper is exactly the same size because see, they, you've got the red sticking out there and on the bottom. So it's not just badly lined up, it is a different size, but that doesn't matter. Right, next, get your needle and thread it. Get a nice wide-eyed needle. And pop it through. Now you need this piece of string to be three times the length of the book, at least. Two, three, and I always like to leave a little bit more. Just because I like to leave a little bit more. <laughs> I'm always overly cautious. Right, then clean off your work area. I'm always having to remind myself. Now... You just want to make three holes. Now you make one in the centre-ish. Don't panic. Roughly in the centre. Wiggle your needle about if you want a bigger hole. And then one about an inch or so from the top. And one an inch or so from the bottom. Don't worry if they're not perfect. It really doesn't matter that much. It's different if you're making these to sell or for a competition. But if you're making it for your own pleasure, then just enjoy it. I do, and my things are very wonky, but I just live with it. I'm quite happy. 
Right, now we want to make sure there's roughly the same gap between top and bottom. And then where you've made the hole, just draw a little mark on where the holes are. Make the mark, oh, that's not a very clear mark, is it? On your signature there. My pencil for today, in case anybody's interested, is a pencil that has no identity because I used it to stir my gesso and didn't clean it off. Right, so now open up your signature and you know it's not going to move because it's clipped in place and go through, make three holes. Again, it's just like putting a peg in a hole. It's putting a needle in a hole. Ah. It does help you open all the sheets. Cute. One, two, more difficult three we're nearly there you're doing so well i tend to call this the hokey cokey method and you'll see why because i'm going to have my knot on the outside then you poke your needle in there now you can try to do this right through everything at the same time it's just not worth the effort ah, you can see i've moved a little so my holes are not lined up Never mind, we'll see what we can do there. So we go into the hole we made through the signatures. So we are in at the middle and then out at the top. Oh dear, that's really not a good hole, is it? Now I've made a new one coming through to the right hole on the back and you go out. Now then, with the hokey cokey in mind, where do you think we're going next? That's right, we're going in. We're going in at the bottom. Which is now the top, because I turned it over. And through. Is this one in line? Not very well. Not very much. In. And then. So we've gone in, out, in. And for the final question of the day, we're going to go. That's right, out. Through the middle. Again, don't try and do it all in one go because it's very difficult. Go through all the sheets and then go through the cover. Pull it through and then we'll have a look at the outside. Make sure that your papers come either side of the string. Now if they're this side and you tie them off, the, the knot is going to go through the hole. So just poke your needle under there tighten everything up shake it all about tie your knot one way and then the other way take your needle off and give yourself a round of applause so here you have your cover journal now mine is trying to burst open all the time because the paper is so crinkly but look at that. You've got your signatures sewn in inside. And there's the back of the book. What a lovely little journal. Now the end here. You can do a few things. You can just snip them. I don't like to snip them. You can tie them in a little bow. Yeah, and that looks quite decorative. Or there's something else you can do. I've got a circle of punch here. So I'm going to punch out two circles. One inch punch this is. One, two, and then we'll cut these to the same length. And there. And this is clear gel tacky glue. Alina's, Aileen's. Do yourself a circle of glue. I like to bend the end of that over. Give it a bit more sticking power and then stick the other circle on the top. And there's one. So I'll get my punch again. One. Two. And the same thing. Nice bit of glue. There, 
always stick the lid back on the glue immediately otherwise it'll go hard as I found I thought oh it'll be okay for a couple of minutes it wasn't Pop that into the glue stick the circle on the top press it down and you've got a couple of seconds to wheel it about and make sure it is actually lined up if you want to you can decorate the front with a book plate or you could i've got these vintage fabrics here you're all stuck so you can pick a nice fabric and put that on the front and then if you get yourself some white plain white fabric and then stamp the word journal or diary or notebook you can do that and put that on the top hmm, which one shall i go for oh i like that Hmm, I could put some lace there too, couldn't I? Where should I put it? If I put that, it's not wide enough. Oh, I know what I've got. If I get my paper cutter out, I can... I've got some of this. So I want to make it slightly wider than that. Hmm, shall I tear it? Or shall I cut it? Because this is such a symmetrical one, maybe... No, I'll tear it. When you're tearing and you want a bit of a rough edge, always tear the bit you're throwing away upwards. So we're going to want that there. And about here. So the bit I want to throw away is torn upwards. And that leaves a nice edge for you to ink in there. Right, throw in that bit away. So we'll do that. And how wide does this need to be to look good? Ooh, right, not a lot of space there, so we'll very carefully tear upwards the bit we want to throw away. Oops, let's move all these out of the way. I want to try and adopt a good attitude of always clearing my workspace up. I'm not very successful at the moment. Can I put some of that on there? What do you think? If we put that there and put that on top. Oh, I think I like that. So we need to cut that about there. First of all, we glue this in place. So should we put it there or there? I like the rule of thirds. I think it just does help things look attractive to the eye. So rather than put it halfway, so if you imagine two lines, cutting this into thirds, and if you go nearer the top line, you can't go near to the bottom line, but it looks a bit odd. I just think it gives it more interest than halfway. So, that was our sticky glue or tacky glue around the outside. There. We pop that on there. Aha, I know what we need to do. Quick, we hold it sticks. Pull it back off. Let's ink it in with my... Inking tool that I had from Louise. Look at that. That was so quick and easy and listen to that noise. There we go. And now we stick it back down again. <laughs> There's already plenty of glue on there. Like that. Cover my ink pad up. And we're going to stick this fabric on. around the edges a little blob in the middle I'm not too worried nobody's going to swing on this as far as I know put that in there like so push it down Don't move it over a little bit like that oh my postman's just been I wonder what he's bringing for me today and then I can put that along the bottom there yep i like that so i'm not going to glue the whole thing down i'm just going to glue the lined edge so that it's again something that people can do they can just lift it up if they want to feel the texture i just like to add as much interest as possible to my journals put that on there right at the fabric level mm, snip that a little bit off it looks a bit odd first oh I like that so we've got these which bring in the floral aspect 
got a rink there and then eventually if I I'll just tear this off and show you you can get the word journal or diary or whatever stamped onto a piece of paper or a piece of fabric fabric always looks nice and it doesn't matter that it's not waterproof ink because you're not going to wash your journal I hope and then you could write something on there and you've got yourself a mini journal and you made it all yourself and wasn't that simple you didn't think you could do it but you did and I'm so proud of you so there it is our brightly coloured rainbow journal so this is the one that's finished this one isn't but I, what I'll do is I'll decorate this one and actually fill this in we'll put some pockets I'll show you a few quick tips for making easy pockets and things like that and that way then you'll know how to complete your own little journal right from start to finish but for now you already know just with the hokey cokey in out in out shake it all about how to make your own journal using a signature using the sewn in method and it was as easy as putting a peg into a hole let me know if you're going to try this let me know if you do try it and if it's a success i would really like to know how you get on with making your journal if you're going to try this out then why not subscribe and that way then you can see how i develop this idea the sort of things i'm going to stick into this journal we'll complete this journal with front page and lots of things in the inside lots of tags and hidden pockets things that you can see get an idea of what to put in your journal you can either copy my journal completely or you can come up with your own ideas so i'll see you all next time but until then don't forget draw every day and have fun bye